As the number of people infected by the coronavirus continues to rise throughout the world, so does the wave of disinformation about the pandemic. Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we break down fakes about Ukraine and expose the outlets that generate them. So let's get to it. If it's bad, then the United States must be behind it. The Kremlin's main disinformation narrative continues to claim that the U.S. created the coronavirus. In second place, we have the European Union, which, according to the spinners of lies, is losing the fight against the virus and is on the verge of disintegration. And then there's the claim that the coronavirus is a weapon aimed at destroying China's economy and a secret plan of the global elite. And finally, Ukraine and Nazis. Russian disinformation narratives must always have a Nazi lurking somewhere. So let's break this down. Our colleagues at the EU versus Disinfo database have been tracking coronavirus-related disinformation cases for more than two months now. Since January 22nd through the end of March, the anti-American coronavirus disinformation wave continues going strong. Russia's disinformation machine has used the Russian, Arabic, and Spanish languages to disseminate fakes claiming that the U.S. is behind the spread of the coronavirus. Using its RT, Arabic, and Spanish language sites and channels, as well as its Sputnik agency, the Kremlin continues to relentlessly pound out different versions of the same theme. From the beginning, this narrative went like this. The virus is man-made. It's a weapon created by NATO. The U.S. constructed the virus. The Pentagon did it. The ruling elites are spreading it. The purpose of this supposed Finder scheme is to introduce world tyranny and secure American supremacy. Third world countries are the target of the evil West. Coronavirus was created in the U.S. at Fort Derrick. Coronavirus is an Anglo-Saxon biological warning that originated in American labs to target opponents of the United States. The United States created COVID-19 to strike an economic blow against China. These conspiracy theories that aim to cast a shadow over the United States and NATO as the alleged creators of the coronavirus are nothing new. Today it's the coronavirus, yesterday it was AIDS, tomorrow it will be something new. The fact is, coronaviruses are well known to science. They are a large family of viruses that can cause respiratory illnesses. In a new study in the Journal of Medical Virology, researchers sequenced the genes of 2019 NCOV, as the new coronavirus is now called, and suggested that 2019 NCOV likely originated in snakes. Hence, the likeliest version so far is that the virus began to spread from Wuhan's local seafood and animal market. On the one hand, many pro-Kremlin outlets claim that the coronavirus pandemic is a hoax. But on the other hand, they present all sorts of end-of-world scenarios, particularly for the European Union. Because of the pandemic, the Schengen system is collapsing. NATO will fall apart. The EU is paralyzed and the Baltic states are doomed. Globalization is finished and the coronavirus is the EU's Chernobyl. These recurring pro-Kremlin disinformation narratives about coronavirus and alleged EU disintegration never provide any evidence to support these outlandish claims of EU collapse. The European Union is in fact supporting the member states in addressing the crisis and mitigating the economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. To cushion the blow to people's livelihoods and the economy, the European Commission has adopted a comprehensive economic response to the outbreak, applied the full flexibility of the EU fiscal rules, revised its state aid rules and proposed to set up a coronavirus response investment initiative of 37 billion euro to provide liquidity to small businesses and the healthcare sector. The European Commission has earmarked 47.5 million euro for shortlisted research projects into COVID-19 that can improve epidemiology and public health, including preparedness and response to outbreaks. The EU has also created the first ever stockpile of medical equipment. And then there's Ukraine. A failed state, a favorite Kremlin disinformation narrative that gets repeated ad nauseum. The coronavirus pandemic is only adding fresh oil to this old Russian fire. The anti-Western, conspiracy theory heavy site Southfront wrote that, quote, in social and economic terms, Ukraine is in free fall and completely incapable of handling the COVID-19 pandemic. Following years of chaos and corruption, Ukraine is now a deindustrialized country which can sell only three things, men for menial jobs in Poland and in the EU, women, prostitution, and its black soil. Not only does the site claim that everything in Ukraine is falling apart, but 
also that the country is overrun by Nazis. And the only ones who can save it are pro-Russian Member of Parliament Vadim Rabinovich and the odious former Minister of Justice under disgraced former President Viktor Yanukovych, Olena Lukash. Again, the site disseminates the recurring pro-Kremlin disinformation narrative about Ukraine as a failed state, which is consistent with pro-Kremlin narratives alleging that Ukraine is a degrading state that has failed to become Europe while the EU is planning to rob Ukraine's soil. The reality is, Ukraine has a functioning government and economy. It is a member of many international organizations and a party to international agreements. Ukraine has bilateral diplomatic relations with the majority of states. The Ukrainian economy has been affected by the recessions of the 1990s, the world economic and financial crisis in 2008 through 2009, and the crisis provoked by the Russian military invasion and occupation of Ukraine that started in 2014. However, its gross domestic product, the GDP, has exceeded the pre-independence levels in 2005 and was at an all-time high in 2013. Moreover, Ukraine's GDP per person has been improving steadily since 2015 and as of 2018 through 2019 was the largest in Ukrainian history. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on our website, stopfake.org. Be vigilant, stay safe, look out for fakes. Don't listen to Russian disinformation because washing your hands and social distancing will in fact protect you from the coronavirus. And remember, if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran and this is Top Fake. Thanks for watching.